Welcome back to MFO, everybody. I, I am getting tired of doing these. Uh, these. This is my tournament recap video for the Kentucky Lake tournament. Guys, this one hurts more than any of them. I went into the Kentucky Lake tournament. Uh, I'm familiar with Kentucky Lake. Kentucky Lake is only a six hour drive from me. So it's a lake that I've been to. It's a lake that sets up where it makes all the non-fishing things kind of easier. It's an easier drive. Uh, I got there with plenty of time, stayed at the Moors, nice cottage at the Moors, comfortable situation. Uh, and boy, after practice, uh, the first day of practice, probably had about 15, 16 pounds uh, first day of practice. Second day of practice was a little tougher, but... I was doing some things that was kind of, all right, I'm going to check some stuff that's a little off the wall. Third day of practice, went back to doing some new new places, but similar to what I did on the first day and probably had 18 or 19 pounds in practice and was thinking, wow, any of the three days of practice, any two combination of the three days of practice and I'm going to at least cash a check if not make a top 30 and my confidence level was super high going into the tournament um, and really felt good about what I had found. So let me explain a little bit about what I was doing during practice. I was throwing a small Kitech uh, swim bait around a little three point three Kitech. Uh, I found that, you know, the sexy shed color, anything in a white uh, kind of bait was working just great. I found that, boy, if I threw it on that tush, finesse tush rig, the red ones, it gave, uh, the smallies were really hitting that. And I, and I was getting bit more on the red one that had a, that little bit of red coloring to the to the head of the bait um, versus just the plain one. So felt like I had everything dialed in in terms of how to get bit by those smallies and bedding smallmouth. I went into this looking at it from a standpoint of that's what I wanted to target. But I also had areas in the first one fourth of pockets where I could go in and look for largemouth. And I was finding some largemouth that were on beds, but there weren't any females that were on beds as well, but there were definitely females cruising the banks in those areas. And during practice, caught a number of males off beds that maybe were just barely keepers or weren't even keepers. But boy, the females, good sized females that were uh, in those areas as well. So I felt like I had a good one, two kind of punch. Like I could go out and get smallmouth and those smallmouth were going to be in the two, two and a half pound range. I had some smallmouth during practice that were threes and fours. And boy, if I could then go in and get a large uh, female largemouth from those areas, I felt like I was really in good shape. Guys, before we keep going with this tournament recap, I'd, uh, this is our On the Water uh, Wednesday segment. Uh, as you know, we do On the Water Wednesdays and Underwater Wednesday uh, in the pool, and we'd hope that you would subscribe to the channel uh, and get notified every time we put out a video Monday through Friday. We appreciate you subscribing. I also want to send a big shout out to those of you who subscribed uh, at the from the weigh-in on Kentucky Lake. Had a number of people who subscribed to the channel uh, when they were watching the weigh-in there at Kentucky Lake. And remember, if you haven't already, please DM me. Uh, we're going to get you some core tackle uh, gifts uh, for subscribing during the weigh-in. So. Make sure to uh, direct message me and get me your information about that. All right, what were the mistakes that I made? Well, a couple. Number one, I was looking for a specific structure, and I'm going to show you that here. If I found areas that had pea gravel banks with 
some chunk rock. Those were the areas that I was looking for, and those were the areas that I was finding fish. And when I was catching these smallmouth during practice, a lot of them had the red eyes. I knew that they were spawning, so I knew that they were going to be there again when I came back in the tournament. And in fact, they were to some degree. But in a lot of situations, I did not get those fish to bite again during the tournament on the first day. And the mistake that I made was continuing to throw the Kitek and not switching up baits. Because the second day of the tournament, I decided I'm going to go back and re-hit some of those areas that I found during practice that I didn't get those fish to bite on in the first day of the tournament, but I went back and threw a Ned rig. And sure enough, if I didn't go back and pick up a lot of those fish that I had found in practice, but didn't get to go the first day of the tournament, but did get them to go the next day of the tournament just because I used a different bait. And that was a, definitely a mistake that I made on the first day. Going back and you're, I'm refishing fish that I had already caught during practice, but I used the same bait. And that was clearly a mistake um, because the minute I changed up baits, I was able to get those fish to go. Another major mistake that I made was during practice, I was setting the hook on one of the things that I found. I did a video earlier this week on the Berkeley Spin Rocket. And boy, they were really hitting that bait. And it was a really good bait. But I, I left the hooks on that bait during practice and therefore hooked several good, good sized fish during practice when I would have preferred to bend the hooks over on my bait during practice, especially with a top water, I'd have been able to tell what size fish they were uh, and then had a better chance of going back and connecting with those fish, having not hooked them during practice. So that was my second mistake. And then the third mistake that I made that, uh, I didn't realize until after the tournament was over and was watching MLF Live was that a lot of guys were doing similar things than I was, but they were doing it on the opposite side of the lake on those shallow flats that were in that six to nine feet of water on exactly opposite lake from where I was. I was on the LBL side of the lake and there were a lot of the top 10 guys were on the, uh, what would be the west side of the lake. And I never looked at that part of the lake at all. And that was definitely a mistake uh, in not spending that second day going and, and doing that. Uh, unfortunately, lost several fish on that second day. I probably had eight keepers um during that second day of the tournament, um, but lost three of them that really, really would have helped. Like I said, guys, a very disappointing tournament. Uh, one that I really thought I was going to do much better on. And in fact, ended up being one of the worst tournaments in terms of not even bringing in a limit on, on uh, either day of the tournament, bringing in four. Um, so, it's a short turnaround. We go to Lake Eufaula in Alabama in two short weeks. And so we're going to be back at it again. And the only thing that we can do is kind of brush it off and hopefully learn from the mistakes and get out there and, and try and do a little bit better on the next go around. And guys, that's why I put these videos out. Believe me, it hurts my heart to be thinking about what I did wrong on Kentucky Lake and, and the mistakes that I made and the mistakes that I seem to not be able to correct on the water. And it takes coming back and processing it afterwards before I kind of realize what I'm doing wrong. But sharing that with you not only kind of helps it solidify in my mind, but it also, you know, if I can share these mistakes with you, 
Hopefully you're better at correcting them than I am and you can get to a place where you don't make the same mistakes that I made. So I hope this information helps. Enjoying all the fish catches that I did show between practice and tournament time. And we will see you again tomorrow for another episode of Mark Fisher Outdoors. Take care, everybody.